On the crude truth, obviously, we like to stay true. And as all my listeners and viewers know, I'm from the great state of Texas. We're going to talk about that and much more on this episode of The Crude Truth. In 1901, at Spindletop Hill near Beaumont, the future of Texas changed dramatically as, like a fountain of fortune, thousands of barrels of oil burst from the earth towards the sky. Soon, Detroit would be cranking out Model Ts by the millions, and America was on the move, thanks to the black gold being produced in Texas. Now, more than a century later, the vehicles are different, but nothing else has truly changed. Sure, there may be many other alternative energy sources like wind and solar and electric. But let's be honest, America depends on oil and entrepreneurs. And if the USA is truly going to be independent, it has to know the crude truth. This episode of The Crude Truth is brought to you by Oil and Gas Workers Association, Sandstone Group, Air Compressor Solutions, Basin Fluids, and the Fuel Pros. Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time of day it is. Thank you, as always, for watching another episode of The Crude Truth. As we gear up for another wonderful election season, um, I'm sure everybody's already begun to hear this and that. I wanted to more or less highlight a group here in the great state of Texas that is actually fighting for not only the Texans, here in Texas, but also for individuals across America on true conservative values. Today, I'm bringing on the CEO and director of True Texas Project, Julie McCarty and Fran Rhodes. Ladies, how are y'all? We're doing great. We're excited to have a conversation with you. Oh, yeah. well, I'm doing excited good. to be here. And, you know, I think, you know, uh, in our pre-meeting, we, we were able to kind of talk a little bit. And, you know, uh, for my listeners out there, you know, Miss Fran has got her guns on her earrings. Yeah. She's got her earrings on today. And uh, so I know I'm in good company today. So I'm just so excited. Uh, this is kind of a more of a... Um, personal because I've had an opportunity to go to one of y'all's events and um, I just really enjoyed everything y'all had to say. Y'all weren't trying to shove anything down anybody's throat. Y'all were just talking about, hey, man, we need to get back to a place of really what I feel like is reality. I think half of America thinks we're there um, now that we've got what they called um, honor back in the White House. And I use quotations because the stuff that's been going on in the White House is definitely not honorable. And what this what these politicians are truly trying to do to us as Americans is just, I think, not a good thing. OK, they're doing it through regulations uh, or doing it through secret backdoor deals all the time. So um, I know that you guys recently had a great event with Miss Carrie Lake, uh, who's doing great things herself right now. And uh, so I just wanted to bring you all on. Um, now I've been, uh, you know, so there's my opening. So Miss Julie, Miss Fran, welcome again. And uh, please, please tell us, uh, Miss Julie, just a little bit of, about True Texas Project to start off. Okay. Um, True Texas Project started in 2009 okay. as Northeast Tarrant Tea Party. So we really just had one little corner of Tarrant County, which mm -hmm. is a significant um, metropolitan area in yes. Texas, right? Yes. So um, we've always heard that as um, as Texas goes, so goes America. Yes. Well, it is uh, Texas that keeps America reddish, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then it is Tarrant County that keeps Texas red. It is the last a large county that is still red. And so it is Northeast Tarrant that keeps Tarrant County red. And so when we started True Texas Pro or Northeast Tarrant Tea Party at the time, we didn't know that we were that strategically located yeah. to keep all of America together. Like <laughs> we're, we're holding America on, on our shoulders. But um, it immediately took off. Like God just really blessed our organization. We were all rookies. We had no political experience at all, but we were just winning elections. We were getting national. We sued the IRS and won. Yes. Um, so we were on national media, that sort of thing. And so we were getting all this attention and our group just exploded. And I, we can't take credit for that. I'm sure Fran would say the same thing. We can't take credit for that, but uh, we give credit to God and we now have influence over like there's nobody in Austin that doesn't know who True Texas Project is. So um, at our 10 year point, we changed our name to True Texas Project from mm -hmm. Northeast Tarrant Tea Party because, you know, the Tea Party name had been tarnished. Oh, and yeah. obviously we were bigger than just Northeast Tarrant at that time. So yes. now we're True Texas Project. And at that point we opened up, we're now at 
18 locations around the state that meet once a month and we bring in great speakers and then we have other events, social events and activities that we plan. Uh, I, first of all, you know, I did not know that um, Northeast Tarrant County was the um, as, as influential as it right. truly is. I, I would have never guessed that. Uh, and you grew I, up there. I did. Right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah, I know. I grew up over there. And um, uh, right right there, like like I said, y'all you, you know where, where I said during the pre-meeting. And uh, but also that Tarrant County is technically the last holdout. I, 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 well, I don't want to know if the word holdout, but the last fighter um, uh, for the Republican Party here. I do know, I remember last uh, cycle, a couple of people texted me saying, hey, we may be in for a surprise. Um, but, uh, but you know, uh, Ms. Fran, you shared with me where you're at and the, oh, yeah. the, uh, the area is booming in the area that you are yes. in Northeast Tarrant County. Um, are you seeing a lot of uh, individuals that are uh, still stepping up uh, w within the Republican Party as you're over there in that part of the world now? Yes, um, definitely. We have a brand new Tarrant County judge on the commissioner's court okay. who's been a friend to us for uh, 12 or more years. And uh, he's a former mayor of Farmers Branch. And uh, he's been influential in Southlake in helping turn their school board uh, over to conservatives. Okay. So we're very excited about that. Um, until they redistricted, my councilman on the Fort Worth City Council mm -hmm. was is probably the only conservative we have there. Um, so we're very proud of him. Fort Worth is really trying to, to go blue. Yes. I, I mean, if you look at just Fort Worth City voters, I think like 50 some percent of the voters are Democrats. Uh, but it's the rest of Tarrant County that, that keeps the county in the, on the Republican side. So um, Tim O'Hare is bringing some great changes to the at the county level, and we have a great sheriff and a great DA uh, doing the same thing and, and working well with Judge O'Hare. So that's exciting. I think we're going to start to see things turning okay. back to our side of okay. things because of their leadership, mostly. I think City of Fort Worth... It's always going to be very liberal. It's just the nature of the city itself. I got you. Now, if you don't mind, Ms. Fran, let's, let's, let's talk about you a little bit and how you got started because you are yeah. the the, uh, the director. The president. President, yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. And uh, so how long have you been with True Texas Project and how did you get involved? I got involved in uh, late 2009 with okay. the Northeast Tarrant Tea Party. Okay. Um, I remember going to meetings and thinking, I, okay, I'm just here for information. I'm not going to volunteer for anything. Uh, you know, I'm just going to come to the meetings. And next thing I know, this woman <laughs> <laughs> started some new program, and I said, sure, I will do that. Yeah. And, and I started doing that and uh, just got more and more involved over the years. Um, I was vice president of fundraising for a few years, so I, you know, focused on our fundraising projects and events like the one you went to in April. Yes, yeah? that was a great one. That was a gala, gala, gala however mm -hmm. you want to say it. What was it? It was just a big old party. Texas Tough. Texas Tough. <laughs> well, y'all even had a Kyle Rittenhouse there. Yeah, yeah he was there. And um, I was, I had to leave and I saw him standing there uh, by himself for a minute um, um, uh, right as the, the dancing started. And uh, I think they were getting ready to line up to meet, but he's just standing there by himself. And I was like, I know him. Like, and I was like, I know him. And I said, hey, man. And I saw his name, Kyle Rittenhouse, on his tire. I said, hey, love what you're doing. And I meant it. Um, uh, you know, love what you're doing. Keep it up, my man. And uh, and good luck. And I walked out. And I walked out uh, for my Uber. And then all of a sudden, I looked around as I'm walking. I was like, man, there's a line for him. And I was like, oh, my God. I literally just kind of cut in line of all these people. But he was like by himself. And it was like, mm -hmm. oh, my God. But then I just oh, walked you cut out. you in line to talk didn't, to him? Didn't know. But, but he was like literally like by himself yeah. in an arms radius yes and uh, and his people were i guess over there lining everything up and he was just standing by one of the pillars just kind of very quiet you know we humble. didn't even know he was going to be no there. we didn't and, really? and i did the same thing you did uh, someone said have you have you met kyle and i'm like no i don't think i've met kyle and i looked at the name tag you know kyle written house i'm trying to think I, no i don't think i've met him and then all of a sudden i went Oh, that Kyle Ritt. <laughs> yeah. We, we did not know. He just bought a ticket and came. That is awesome. That was awesome. And so um, I, I want to talk, and, and star power, and, and I want to go back to that. So I, I want to say it. Oh, I had to say it real quick. But, okay, you, you got involved just to be, uh, just for information with the Texas Tea Party. 
or well, uh, with the Tea Party. Mm -hmm. And I mean, look what you guys have done. And I think that's awesome. It's like that's the start of a real movement right there. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm I may be putting words in your mouth, Mr. Friend, but I'm a little bit hesitant and don't know what's going on. Let me get some information. Let me hear what these people have to say. And uh, I think, you know, uh, what you guys have been able to do and how grow up big and strong. And let's talk about suing the IRS. So if I'm wrong, please tell me because uh, I'm, I'm on uh, on record for being wrong about oil prices this year. So it's okay if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, that, you talked about that you sued the IRS in one. Was that when the IRS went after people like Ted Cruz and everybody else just to go look at, at their IRS records? Uh, was, they were specifically that? targeting yes. um, tea parties um, because they didn't want us to be able to have the influence that we have. So um, it's it's supposed to take like a two or three month period to get your 501c4. Okay. Um, and we waited four years and they asked for stacks and I mean, stacks and stacks of information. They wanted to know who everybody was that ever attended a meeting, who had ever spoken, every handout that had ever been given. They wanted to know names and addresses, phone numbers. They wanted everything and we wouldn't give it to them. And so Jay Seculo with, uh, I'm sure a lot of your people know who Jay Seculo yes. is because he's awesome, but um, he represented us for free and we won. So Wow. Okay. So I didn't know that y'all, okay. What a what I mean, again, I remember just hearing, because I was, you know, in 2009, I think I just graduated college and it was during the the, the recession mm -hmm. and um, and I use quotations because I think it's really in the eye of the beholder yes. anything uh, that we have in the, the Great Recession. Um, but I just remember all that and um, I, I don't mean to bring up Ted Cruz, but I just remember he was part of the Tea Party itself. Yeah. And um, so I think what y'all's movement has been able to do and also I want to go back to your opening, Miss Julie. I love how you said how Texas goes, America goes. And I believe that 110%. And I also believe it from the oil standpoint, because uh, as, as I shared with you, I'm in the oil and gas industry. And I believe as Texas oil goes, American oil goes, as the world goes. Yeah. And um, I had an opportunity to watch something the other day about uh, World War I, and it made me start thinking about World War II. Because in World War I, we were, we were there, but we weren't. You know, Great Britain was still Great Britain. And then by the end of World War II, we were the superpower of the world. And we have been there. And I'm afraid that we will lose that in less than a hundred years if we do not make some great changes to go back. Years. No, no, like, let, no, no, man. Years. no, 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 uh, no, We will lose it. What I meant, I'm sorry. We will be a great power for less than a hundred years. Oh, starting yes, at no, the World no, War yes, man. After yeah. World War II, when you had people like Great Britain that were for you know centuries before that, that they they ruled the seas, they did this, and it's like. What is it like? Why is it that we have people? And I'll, I'll, I'll throw this out there. Why do we have people that want to make us the same as the rest of the you know the world? What what is it that y'all find that that y'all see? I'll throw that random question out at you guys. Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> I, I know like, it's a random one, uh, but but I feel like that's what they're doing, and I feel like that's what you guys are fighting. Is you you guys want to keep America? strong Sov safe it's one secure. of our tenets right like yeah. um national sovereignty like yes. we want to keep america america um but you know there's always been a push for a, a one world government um let's make sure everybody's fed let's make sure we control the population like all these things and you can't i mean you can't have national sovereignty when that's your goal no. so yeah. the, the more powerful they get the more they rope in people that call themselves republicans and really aren't mm -hmm. um you know that they get more of a foothold and we have to constantly constant i mean our founding father said that you know it's it's a republic if you can keep it and yeah. um freedom has to be water, watered with blood i don't know what that exact quote the is tree, but you know it's tree of liberty has yeah. to be watered with the blood of patriots yeah. you yeah. you have to keep fighting and, and it's everybody's like so like you were talking about um Fran had no experience, and she was just there for information. Oh, no, I didn't say no, no experience. I said she's just looking. Right. For the no, I had no experience. <laughs> and, it, and it's my same story, too. Like, yeah. I remember feeling like a fraud every time I went to one of our meetings, and, and people look at me like, you must be this political expert. And I'm like, no, I'm just a stay-home mom who knew something needed to be different. And that is the message that we're always yeah. trying to get to everybody else, that I don't care if you don't have experience. I know you see what's going on and I know you know it's wrong. You have to be the one to step up and do something, just like Fran did, just like I did, just like everybody in True Texas Project did. Can we talk a minute about the True Texas mission? Yes, please. So in, in 2019, when we changed our name from Northeast Tarrant Tea Party to True Texas Project, that was 
really a deliberate name choice, and we agonized over it for days. <laughs> days. Um, and the mission we came up with, the mission statement says that in the spirit of the original Texians who fought valiantly for their lives, their land, and their liberty, True Texas Project exists to educate and motivate citizens to engage in government at every level. Yeah. And so that's what we focus on. Not so much at the national level because we don't feel like we can have influence there. Right. Uh, we can't hop in the car and run to DC for a day, but we can hop in the car and run to Austin for a day, and we do. Um, so we feel like we have to save Texas because eventually that national government is gonna fall apart. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna need states like Texas to stand our ground and, mm -hmm. and a place for me, it's like a place for my kids and my grandkids that don't live in Texas. They will have a place to go if I can save Texas. So that's... Dude, you, you kind of got me right there, Miss <laughs> Grand. With I mean, uh, I, I was just thinking about when I said national in the beginning of my little teaser or whatever, and it's like, uh, I feel like for somehow, as much as I love Texas and I know how important it is, I almost feel like I didn't know until right now how important Texas is on a national level just by what you guys are doing at the state level. Yeah. And again, um, I cannot thank y'all enough for coming on. Um, so, you know, uh, Miss, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Julie, let's talk about you and how you got, you know, you said that you had no experience uh, in, in, in any of this. Uh, you shared with me that um, I think just being an economic and govern, uh, government teacher um, it's, it's probably pretty much just good enough, but uh, you know, to get started, I think you definitely had at least enough to get in trouble. Uh, so let's talk about you and how you got started. Well, you got that backward. So oh. yes, I do teach economics and government, but okay. that's because somebody needed to teach it and they see me as this political guru and, oh, she must know what's going on. Let's have Julie teach it. Yeah. So, um, that came after. So oh, wow. it's not like that's my natural background and okay. it's not even my natural passion. Like people tell me, Julie, you do politics cause that's your thing. And I'm like, it's not my thing. I don't want it to be my thing, but it has to be my thing because I have a daughter. Yeah. And so I want to talk a little bit more what, about what Fran was saying, though, mm -hmm. about the importance of Texas. And so right now we're seeing, like we just finished, Texas only has a legislative session every two years for six months, yes, right? And they do terrible things all the time, and we fight them, we push back all the time. And we're the property taxes are taxing people out of their home. And so more and more I'm hearing people tell me, I'm going to leave Texas because Texas isn't the conservative bastion that everybody thinks it is. Everything's, I mean, it's wrong. Like we're going the wrong direction all the time. And I don't care how many times Greg Abbott sends out some kind of political message that he's like God, he's not, he's terrible. And so all these people wanna leave Texas. And my answer to that is you can go to another state that might have lower property taxes or they might be acting more conservatively than Texas is. But when the world and the nation looks for a conservative leader, it's always going to be Texas. Yeah. And so if anybody is going to save America, it is going to be Texas. And so if we all flee and go to Florida or Tennessee because they have better taxes, where does that leave our nation? Wow. It has to be Texas. We have to save Texas. Oh, my. so I, I love that, that the way that you guys are. I mean, I'm getting pumped right now. And uh, <laughs> Uh, because I'm not a political person by any means. I've had the opportunity to have on some great guests on my show. Um, I've even had on a few, uh, I say a few, just one, but I invite Democrats to come on the show because I, I want to keep it, as Brett Baer calls it, I think fair and balanced on his little show on Fox. And uh, But I do still have my passion and my beliefs. And you talk about um, the uh, the people that fought for uh, uh, Texas, Miss Fran. You know, uh, I've been on an Alamo kick my, uh, lately myself, so that was the first thing that came to my <laughs> mind. Um, and that, you know, you had the hundred and... Uh, 113, 126, you know, uh, however many were there, I forgot, 100 and something that, that fought for what they believed in. And that is that is what I think we all come with now uh, with Don't Mess With Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, I did a post just the other day that we had Joaquin Castro and uh, Doggett, Daggett, uh, Lloyd Daggett sent a letter to the EPA saying that our railroad commission doesn't know how to take care of 
the oil and gas industry here in Texas, and which is a total blatant lie. And I had to get out there and say, hey, man, what, 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 you know, Mr. Castro, what do you know about oil in the first place? Let alone <laughs> you're going to tell an organization that's been doing it forever and been doing a darn good job and fighting to keep us, you know, uh, doing what we do. And, uh, you know, because, as, as y'all said, as Texas goes, America goes, and I believe as, as Texas oil goes, our uh, national energy security goes mm -hmm. so i mean um and, and let's talk i want to kind of transition here back to the group and and i want to talk about i want to highlight that gala that y'all had real quick sure. just because of the star power that y'all had at that event y'all had uh miss carrie lake on or uh, oh, well, let me not not rephrase that y'all had miss carrie lake there be the uh Yes, of honor. Yes, of honor. Mm -hmm. And you had a wonderful speech right before because you. you introduced her. And uh, so that was just totally awesome. And your speech was excellent. Uh, and you just really, I mean, with the way you guys feel right now with just us three in this room is exactly how I felt when I got to be there. And I had one of the chairs that was facing, you know, I'll see y'all's back. Oh, you know, no. I, was, I had one, you know, I mean, and <laughs> I was way in the back. It was very packed. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but let's talk about how what you guys are doing uh, to really, you know, continue uh, just with, with who y'all are working with, if you don't mind, and just really kind of talk about where y'all want to go here for the next, God, 18 months. Okay. Um I think, did we say at the beginning of the show that we have 18 locations? And so every month we bring in fantastic guest speakers. And okay. so they kind of make the circuit of the 18 locations. And so we're always educating, educating. Um, but right now our focus is really on election 2024. Yes. So we have this little slogan we've been saying that we built the army, the Texas army, like this conservative army, right? Yeah. And then we've been working so hard on training the army and now it's time to engage the army. So we're calling it uh, taking back Texas or no, two, two Texans two taking Texans over. taking charge. Taking, yeah, okay. Two she's Texans she's got the memory charge. I don't have. <laughs> so, <laughs> Anyway, we are working on just our whole plan for election 2024. What are we going to do to get the right candidates out there, to support the candidates, to have election integrity, making sure our votes count, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, I mean... Honestly, the biggest battle we have is helping people understand what is the primary? Why do I have to vote in the primary? Like yeah. they think when they vote in the primary that we're all done and or they don't even vote in the primary at all. So it's always educating, educating, educating. And that's all you can do because we don't get these lessons. All we know, you know, growing up is uh, you vote. And, that, and, and unfortunately, yeah. it's, it's only got two people. That's Voter, it. Voting is not enough no. at, at yeah, all. No. I, and that's one of the big things we have to challenge with people. They, and my generation especially did that for decades. You know, we voted, we were true to that, and, and then we went home and lived our lives. Yes. It's not enough to just vote. You have to be constantly engaged with your government and hold them accountable. And see, and I think, okay, being constantly engaged, I think that's something that social media is a good thing to be constantly engaged. It helps. Okay, it, it yeah. really does because, I mean, you go back to Abraham Lincoln, and he grew a beard after he won just so that people didn't recognize him as he traveled or something like that. that that's the history there. And uh, then he kept the beard. And, you know, so you, sometimes you didn't really know who you were voting for or what they looked like. And uh, another funny example is, um, God, what is that? It's a funny movie with Eddie Murphy where he runs for office. I've seen that. And the whole time, he, you never see the guy's face. Jeff and Johnson, Jeff the name Bro you know. <laughs> yes, Jeff Johnson, the name you know. You don't need to know what uh, Jeff Johnson looks like. You see, you know, he looks like the American flag. And, yeah. you know, he's, he's, he's American. And, and, uh, and, um, uh, he's got his uh, funny voice on when he does that kind of stuff, uh, but um, but that was that was it, and I think that yeah. social media has allowed us to actually be better. I mean, look at uh, and again, I'm not saying and yes, I do like Ted Cruz, but um, he has his own podcast. Some of the other ones now have their own podcast as well, and it's like they're getting a little bit more accessible dare i say the words yeah. and i think that's good now uh, i think it's also you know uh, you know uh, the other side of the coin is um that it also they can't hide the way that they used to right yeah. and that's what and uh i mean i have a i have a, a hard time believing that if they don't know who did something in the white house they're they're lying okay <laughs> um but also i have a hard time believing that uh 
not believing that it didn't happen, that 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 you know that 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 did happen because of social media. So it's got its good things, it's got its bad things. But I think what you guys are 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 really doing uh, is using that. Y'all are using that for the good. Y'all are using. Uh, the education part, you know, again, like I said, y'all aren't shoving anything down anybody's throat. Jesus didn't do that. He mm-hmm. said, hey, come. You know, Did he just compare to. us to Jesus? Uh, <laughs> <I'm>, no. <Wow. laughs> I, I, I'm not. Well, y'all are very sweet. And, and I do want to say this, um, uh, and I will bring up Jesus because y'all both mentioned that neither one of y'all had the, ex- y'all said it, mm-hmm. didn't have the experience to do what y'all were doing. Yeah. But y'all both felt like there was a calling to do something. Yeah. And when God talks to somebody to do something, usually it's like, God, why me? Mm-hmm. You look at his disciples, some of them were definitely, you know, some of the, you know, some pretty mean guys. And it was like, why am I the one that you've chosen to do this, Jesus? Why is it? And you don't question. And you, you've got that, you know, so the conviction I feel, um, that you guys have is just awesome. Like I said, the positive energy that I feel like with you guys, Texas is going to be okay with all that y'all are doing. I know, I know, Julie, oh, wow. I know. Uh, but, but but you know, again, I, I really hope people can um, see what y'all are up to and, and learn. And that's again why I wanted y'all to come on. I uh, this is almost a fan geek out uh, episode <laughs> for me. I really enjoyed what y'all were doing and. Um, um, we need to make sure that Texas stays red. Uh, and I, that's what I think you guys are doing. And, and that's me saying this, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Republican, but you know, I remember the very first time I got to pre-vote back in the, uh, uh, you know, our vote at school. I think I voted for George Bush in 1992. Mm-hmm. You know, I oh, think boy. it was the second or third grade, yeah. you know, it was either him, Perot or Clinton. And so I remember that. Yeah. And, um, um, and then, so I mean, I've been a, I've been a Republican my whole life. As, as well, far can as I just concerned. stop you right there? Yeah. Because we're so particular about we are not a Republican club. Like okay. so many times, people try to put us in that Republican pocket, and yeah. um, I mean. I don't know that we have any Democrats that show up, and most of our people probably do vote Republican, but there's a big difference between a Republican club and what we are, because okay. we push back more against the Republicans than we do the Democrats, because the Democrats always tell us what they are gonna do, and then they do it. The Republicans lie to us and tell us what they're gonna do and don't do it. So we're always having to hold those Republicans accountable. So we're not huge cheerleaders for our Republican representatives. Um, if they did what we told them to do or what they said they would do or what our platform says to do, we are 100% behind them and, you know, we'll donate and we block walk and we work our butts off for them. Yeah. But the rest of them, we want to kick them. I mean, it's, yeah. The, holding people accountable. That yeah. No, uh, that is yes. something I don't think people have done yeah. ever. And I do think that is what y'all are doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, In our right. early days with Northeast Tarrant Tea Party, we focused all of our efforts on getting the right people elected, thinking that would solve all of our problems. Uh, and so often we'd get what we thought was the right guy elected, and then they would disappoint us. Just they like would that. just totally turn on us. So when we changed the name, we changed the focus, and, and we changed the mission to holding people accountable. Because uh, Milton Friedman has said, it's not enough to elect the right person anymore. You have to make it politically profitable for the wrong person to do the right thing. And that's what we were doing. We did it this last session with uh, banning gender modification. That happened purely because of grassroots pressure from all over the state, not just through Texas Project. I'm not taking credit for that. But we were. Oh, we're part. taking credit for that. <laughs> we were definitely a, a, a part of that. And, yes. And the session before in 21, uh, the constitutional carry bill finally passed after five or six sessions because of grassroots pressure. Those people did not want to vote for those two things. They were forced into. It. Wow. Do you ever talk about the Overton window? I don't. I, I don't even know. So what it's kind of a new window. thing that it's all of a sudden people are talking so about. So tell me the about the Overton window. Yeah, let me tell you about the Overton it's window. It's not really new. It's yeah, but it's new in our circles. Time. Like okay. it's obviously it's an old thing, but we're all just now realizing it and talking about it. So it's um, you know politicians. If you have the left and the right, they want to always be right here in the middle because that's how you get reelected, right? So um, the Overton window is that kind of that middle section yeah. of where the people stand. And so we're always trying to push that window further to the right. So we might be talking about um, open carry or constitutional carry or whatever for five or six years before we finally have gotten that window further to the right. So that's what we're doing with our representatives. We're, we're constantly 
pulling them along with us and eventually they do the right thing. What I also like is that how you guys are holding people accountable. Like, again, I want to get back to that because it's like, like you said, y'all trial and error, I guess. It's like, hey, we help these guys out and this is what happened. And I, that's, that, ooh, I couldn't tell you how I'd feel if that happened uh, to me. So I can only imagine how y'all felt. Um, but you guys, okay, let's talk real quick. You talked about the victory with the gender uh, uh, modification ban for children, which I agree with 110%. You know, I mean, uh, how many times does a little boy or a little girl go up and go, hey, mommy, I'm a boy. Hey, mommy, I'm a girl. Okay, when they're little kids, right? They don't understand that doesn't mean that they're – but anyway, tell us about some of the other victories because it was a very packed session. I do agree that it was kind of cheesy, but what were some of the other victories that y'all were a part of? You take that. Come on, Miss Fran. <laughs> well, there, was, there were several successions uh, on, a, on this issue of protecting children. Okay. So uh, people can't no longer hold drag shows with children under 18 present. That, that's been happening all over our state bars and restaurants are hosting kid-friendly uh, drag shows. Yes. Uh, drag queens can no longer read stories to children in public libraries anymore okay. because of that. Um, HB 900 was passed, which is, uh, they call it the Reader Act because it's the one that, that will get the pornographic materials out of school libraries. Okay. And it's, it's aimed at the, uh, the producers of the books, not so much the school district or the parents. At, the, the, the publishers, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, it, it's aimed at controlling it at the publishing level. Okay. So that's great. And, and there were a few others for protecting kids, but I have to tell you there were hundreds of really important conservative Republican priorities that were left on the table. I mean, property tax being the big one, they finally just did that last week. Um, this, the whole school choice issue, whether yes. you're for school choice or not, uh, the governor made that a priority and it hasn't happened yet. Border security, uh, oh. there was a really great bill for border security that was killed on can, a point of order in the what, House. What was it, if you don't mind me? Uh, do it I was ask HB it? 20 okay. by uh, Representative Schaefer, Matt Schaefer, out of Collin County. Yes. Um, it was a very comprehensive bill that would have established a, a Texas Border Patrol group that okay. was under. Uh, the rule of the DPS and the governor. Um, I don't remember all the details, but it was it was the one that everyone was supporting it was supporting um, to really try to do something to push back, it, it invoke the invasion thing that the governor talked about on Twitter, but never oh. really, you know, legislatively did. It would have put legislative power behind that, and uh, it w it was killed by a Democrat on a point of order that was upheld by Speaker Phelan, okay. and. Uh, it died. Now, some of the provisions were tacked on to another bill that, that did pass, but it was extremely weakened and basically ineffective. Okay. And um, I want to talk about failing off air. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, um, but with that being said, with what you, you guys are working on uh, and moving forward, how can people find y'all? How can they get in contact with uh, one of these 18 chapters? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what can they do, Ms. Julie, to get a hold of you guys? Okay, great. Um, well, truetexasproject.com. That's okay. our website. Spell everything out, truetexasproject.com. You can find out about all the trainings we do. Like we have certified true Texans. So you have to take a certain number of classes and learn about, you know, who we are and what we do. And you can be certified as a true Texan. <laughs> and then, um, you know, you can see where there's a map with all of our locations. There's a calendar with, I mean, we do like 50 events a month. It's insane. Wow. So all across the state. Um, I mean, it, it just tells you about who we are and what we do. So okay. we would love you to get on our email list, get on our text list, find our social media. <laughs> it's a big, big state, and we need all the help we can get. Okay. So. Well, Ms. Fran, do you have anything else you would like to add to the end of the show today? I don't think so. I appreciate you talking to us today and spreading the word. I hope that everybody will... Um, Sign up for our emails, and part you can participate in a lot of ways without going to an actual meeting. I mean, I hear a lot of people say, oh, you know, you guys are 50 miles away from me, and I can't do it. There's other ways to participate. There's social media. There's uh, keep up with our emails. Uh, okay. Our citizen advocate group that, that tries to hold these people accountable. We always need people to pray for us, to write letters, to make phone calls. 
Uh, so you don't have to go to a meeting to do that. Yeah, our speakers are all, we record them, so they can go to our YouTube yeah. channel and watch them. Especially, I know you have people that don't live in Texas, and so huh. um, we'd be happy to help anybody that's looking to start their own group. We do that all the time, advise people on how to do what we do. Okay. Well, uh, uh, Miss Julie, Miss Fran, again, I cannot thank you guys enough for coming on uh, an and talking about, no, <laughs> the, the other way around, because, I, again, what I, I've said it several times today, what you guys are doing, I believe that the, uh, this is personal i believe in it and i'm just excited to see where this goes uh moving into 2024 that being said i'm going to leave with this right here as texas goes america goes as america goes the world goes so i'm going to end it with god bless texas we'll see you next time on another episode of the crude truth this episode of the crude truth is brought to you by oil and gas workers association sandstone group air compressor solutions Basin Fluids, and the Fuel Pros. The easiest way to start your own podcast and TV show? Real News Communications Network. Stand out from your competition. Produce streams of high-quality social media content. Become a thought leader in your industry. With RNCN, you get to be the host. We handle everything else. Tour one of our three locations in Dallas, Fort Worth, and the Colony. Call 972 402 6333 or visit launchashow.com to find out more.